Thank you for joining Virto Software for part two of our series on SharePoint migration. My name is Eileen, and in this video I will discuss the steps performed during migration from SharePoint on-premise to Office 365. Analysis and planning are covered in Migration 1, Making a Plan. Today we will begin with migration. Oh, the places we go, or we go for short, is ready to perform a migration from SharePoint on-premise 2013 to Office 365. We go is a white glove courier service operating regionally. They provide specialty packaging, handling, and logistics services to thousands of customers each day. They operate five warehouses across the region and maintain a fleet of 200 vehicles ranging from vans to semi-trucks. I will use WeGo as an example as I discuss the migration process. Site architecture needs to be in place before you migrate data and files. The new site architecture needs to be structured according to your business's needs. If your business operates by department, create separate site collections for each department. If your business operates by location, create separate site collections for each region. If your business operates by products or processes, create separate site collections for each service or product. WeGo has opted to build a flatter structure using multiple site collections connected by a hub site instead of stacking layers of subsites on top of their master site collection. Since they operate across multiple states and have organized their employees and processes by each state, WeGo will create a hub site for each state. Site collections will then be created for each major department and linked to the correct state hub site. This type of site architecture is flat but flexible. Site collections can be moved from hub to hub as needed in the future. Within the Office 365 environment, WeGo has created a policy to only allow one layer of subsite creation for their admins. This allows the organization to maximize tools like search and list connections without having to build complex workflows to break through site barriers. Utilize a migration tool to transfer contents from your existing site to new environment. There are many solutions available such as Office 365 Migration API, Microsoft FastTrack, Hybrid Connection, and third-party tools like Metalogic ShareGate or AvPoint. WeGo is applying their analysis to remove irrelevant data and exceptionally large files from their content transfers. Extremely large files are best stored in another location, like OneDrive. WeGo will create new user groups for drivers, sales, the support team, the warehouse team, and management. Each user group will have different permissions for different site locations, depending on the content they need access to. For example, the drivers will not need edit access to sales quotes. However, viewer access will allow them to look up details if a customer has questions. Management may not need edit access for every site, but they probably think they do. WeGo will control site edit access for managers, depending on whether they manage the department or team that uses each particular site collection. Managers will also be granted site owner permissions for their respective team sites. Third-party software application licenses will need to be coordinated with your suppliers. During the migration process, you will need to keep your old site up and running while you're configuring your new site. Work with your suppliers to purchase migration licenses for your new environment while your project is underway. Configure new functionalities and enhancements laid out during the project planning stage. This may be adding metadata points, configuring workflows, or adding custom visuals and designs to your site pages. WeGo has decided to configure multiple workflows to manage process approvals and schedule changes for package deliveries. For an organization like this white glove service provider, it's important to think about the types of technology available to each employee. Driver or warehouse personnel may not have access to a desktop or laptop computer throughout their day, but migrating to Office 365 means they can access SharePoint from their phone or tablet. 
The mobile platform will offer new ways for employees to interact with business processes throughout SharePoint. Testing phases can be frustrating and time intensive. It's extremely important to take the time necessary to fully test your new SharePoint environment. Keep in mind that the business needs to be able to keep up with day-to-day -day business on top of the additional workload testing requires. During this time, employees will still be operating out of the old, on-premise 2013 environment for day-to-day -day business, but you will likely borrow some individuals to assist with testing functionalities in the new Office 365 environment. WeGo is ramping up for the holiday season, so their employees are already overloaded. They need the new Office 365 site up and running ASAP because they will provide better tools and handle the volume increases that the holiday season creates. WeGo management has decided to hire external consultants to assist with the entire project. This has helped them shorten the project timeline and leaves internal resources available to handle day-to-day -day business needs. The consultants WeGo has hired have worked closely with each business team to understand their business requirements. Their years of experience and knowledge of current best practices has allowed them to build and configure custom solutions that WeGo did not have the ability to create on their own. Ultimately, WeGo will have a better SharePoint experience in their new Office 365 environment. Testing has been completed and it's time to move to production. This can be frustrating for your business. It may seem that the new sites you have configured are not working or that no one can find what they're looking for. Make sure you've granted access to the correct people and user groups, to the correct sites and the correct pages. Make sure you have built documentation and trainings for employees to help them adapt to changes in the site design and business processes. Focus training on the specific needs of each user group. WeGo has decided to let their consultants assist with training as well. Custom documentation has been created, small hands-on training sessions have been scheduled, and the organization has been divided into groups for transition. To keep the business running at peak efficiency during the transition, WeGo will transition employees in small groups based on the department they work for. Management will be trained first so they can assist with and reinforce user adoption. While sales and support will be transitioned now, it has been decided that the warehouse and drivers will not be transitioned until after the holiday season. This means the company will be split across their old SharePoint on-premise and their new Office 365 SharePoint platforms. This will continue to go all the way through the holiday season. The support team will need a few extra resources to accommodate the extra workload this year. Post-migration is about fixing any lingering bugs, archiving your old site contents, and allowing everyone to use the new environment for a while. Once all stakeholders are comfortable in the performance of the new site, it's time to decommission the old site, and decommission or repurpose any old servers or hardware. WeGo has planned to complete their onboarding in January and February for the remaining employees. They may be ready to decommission their old sites as soon as June, but will likely hold off till September to make sure all their ducks are in a row. Six mistakes to avoid for migration from SharePoint on-premise to Office 365. Look for system interconnectivity. Analyze your existing SharePoint environment and all linked systems as much as possible. Lack of information will bring unexpected surprises and in many cases project failures. Discuss migration with each department, making sure critical business processes will not be broken. For some processes, migration to the cloud is extremely high security or legal risk, which can't be taken at all. It's better to obtain that knowledge on the planning stage rather than in the middle of the project. Don't underestimate customization differences in li and limitations in Office 365. If your on-premise environment is highly customized, it can be a big challenge in Office 365 due to customization limitations. Most limitations can only be resolved with third-party solutions 
or significant budget increase for custom development. Some limitations will require rethinking the way you work, restructuring processes to accommodate Office 365 differences. Remember, not all change is bad, but changes are time consuming, so make sure you're anticipating these challenges. Don't try to make a clone of your data structure from on-premise to Office 365. Migration projects are an opportunity to restructure your data, which appeared during your on-premise usage. In some cases, restructuring is the only way to achieve successful migration results. User adoption is 50% of the project success. Post-migration planning is a big challenge for any project. Don't think there's only six key mistakes. There are many more. That's all for this video, so thank you for watching Migration 2, Migration in Action with Virto Software. Look for the next video in our migration series, Driving User Adoption. For more information about Virto Software products and consulting services, visit our website at virtosoftware.com.